Okay, welcome. We are live now. My name is Tasha Kramer and I am the Director for Community Health Improvement for the Partnership for Healthier Carroll County. And joining me today, I'm Karen Falkler with TheraFit Rehab. We are an outpatient neurological rehab. We do um, physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech. I am also a clinician and I am a member of the uh, Mid-Atlantic, I'm a board member for the Mid-Atlantic region of the Parkinson's Foundation, as well as the Senior Provider Information Network and a team member for the Healthy Aging Leadership Team. Thank you for joining us again. We're so glad to have you back. Thanks so much for having me back. I'm so excited. Sure. So today we're going to just jump right in. We have, we're going to talk about preventive care. Um, if you have any questions on Facebook, uh, feel free to put them in the comments. Um, and if we get to them later, like after the live, then we can always ask Karen and uh, we can get those answers to you later. So um, we're going to jump right in with the questions. What is preventive care and why is it important? So preventive care is the proactive approach to your health and your wellness um, that you can take to kind of empower you to help prevent, to help reverse, to help manage um, and detect any sort of adverse health conditions. Um, and it can help you to prevent loss of function. It can help to prevent um, any sort of pain, loss of independence, as well as um, you know, can help to decrease medical bills and even lost wages, you know, due to health conditions. So it's very important and, you know, good. What would be some examples of preventive care? So some examples of preventative care are going to your doctor for those annual check-ins or semi-annual or as kind of necessary, um, as well as going to your dentist um, to have your teeth checked and your gums checked. Um, if you, uh, I know Dr. Rush was on a few weeks ago and um, that's available on the replay. Um, so the other things are getting routine vision and hearing checks, um, as well as utilizing any sort of care coordinators or nurse navigators that may be available to you, as well as seeking um, therapy, um, outpatient therapy and home therapy if you are having difficulty with any of your daily tasks, um, because they can help to kind of optimize your day-to-day -day function. Awesome. Um, how can I use therapy um, for preventative care? So preventative care, uh, we can do balance screenings. We can do movement screenings. Um, we can also help to um, do any sort of transfer training, assisted device training. We can help people find adaptive equipment that might help just make their day go a little bit easier. Um, we can also do home safety evaluations, um, as well as help people just kind of return to hobbies that they kind of have had difficulty with, but it's like not quite enough, like it's not difficult enough to like be a point of pain yet, but it's like, you know, we're here to just kind of optimize life and help you get back to all those meaningful activities. That's awesome. Um, anything simple that we can initiate today to stay healthy? Absolutely. Um, so uh, in case anybody hasn't heard enough of it, <laughs> wash your hands um, and, you know, wash them well and then wear your mask kind of as, as recommended. Um, this can just kind of help, you know, get through the day a little bit easier. Um, other things are looks like we might be frozen. Share is something well, that is um, super helpful. Can, do you still have me? I know yes, that. we do have you now. You did freeze for a second. You did <laughs> freeze like, there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Not um, again. <laughs> I know, I was very concerned there. Um, other things you can do are um, find the things that make you happy and try to find ways to do more of that and just smile. Smiling um, is can help just kind of improve like your just, tone for the day. Um, and it's simple. And the more smiles you share, like the better, like that it's a gift that actually kind of comes back to us. Um, and then the biggest um, one also is to eat healthy and to stay hydrated um, as well. How does nutrition and hydration play a part in preventive care? So when you eat well and you stay hydrated, um, when you're eating, you're hopefully getting those vitamins and minerals that your body needs, like your food is your fuel. And that should help you to like uh, boost your immune system and um, just have the right amount of energy to kind of get through your day. You know, when you eat like really sugary foods, like it can do things with your sugar, 
Um, and when you are staying well hydrated, that's super important because hydration, like that water feeds your cells and your organs. And when you're dehydrated, that can lead to muscle cramps. It can lead to confusion. Um, you know, hydration affects like, like your brain health and your digestive system and everything. So just by eating well and staying hydrated, that can really help like your whole body just kind of function better. I'll put my page here for more, more questions. Are there other things that we can do to work on our health to prevent or manage pain? Yes. Um, so getting a good night of sleep and also finding ways to remove any unnecessary stressors in your life. Um, a lack of sleep and a presence of stress can actually increase your sensitivity to pain. It can make you kind of hypersensitive to pain. It can magnify it. Um, so just by kind of assessing those things, it can help to, you know, reduce unwanted um, outcomes. Um, but it is important to say, like, when you do have pain, like our body has pain for a reason. So if there are things that you're doing that are causing pain and you can't quite get to the bottom of it, you know, talk to your primary care provider, come to therapy. Like we, we want to help you so that that pain doesn't kind of snowball um, because the earlier you address pain, the easier it is to fix. Oh, and exercise, exercise, definitely. That's so important. Exercise helps to reduce stress um, as well as improve quality of sleep. And it also helps to maintain our strength and our body awareness. And this can help us not only move through life with greater ease and, you know, haul things when you're going to BJ's and you're picking up a case of water, but it also helps us to avoid falls. That's interesting. You say that helps to avoid falls because you, you know, we don't think about that when we think about exercising, we think about getting fit, but it does help with balance and falls and things like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. What are some preventive measures older adults can take to avoid falls? So at any age, um, you want to have good strength in your, like good strength is important kind of for overall health and fitness, but lower extremity, um, hip strength and glute strength and leg strength, that can definitely help to prevent falls. Um, so just keep moving and taking walks. Um, you know, when you sleep, you lay down in bed for a few hours and then you get up and you walk to the sofa and you sit for a few hours. Um, you know, moving just once a day for 15 minutes, you know, if it's, it's better than nothing, don't get me wrong, but finding time a couple times during the day to get moving and, you know, that's, that's so much more beneficial. So a, a lot of times I'll recommend to my patients, you know, take, you know, three 15 minute walks during the day, like once in the morning, once in the afternoon and once in the evening, you know, if that's all you can do, like that will help you to kind of stay strong. Um, appropriately challenge your balance and your strength. Um, you know, everybody, we're all in different places on this continuum of health. And so finding ways to continue to challenge yourself is very important. And if you have any questions about how do I challenge myself safely, again, you know, please seek, you know, one of us professionals, like we, we love to help you, but we're passionate about it. Like you may be able to tell <laughs> from my affect, but like, I just, like we genuinely love it and we genuinely want you to feel good. Um, also maintaining good posture. So I love to talk about posture. Not everybody's crazy about posture, but when you think about your body as, you know, your bones as pieces of maybe PVC and blocks, you know, stacked one on top of each other from the ground to the ceiling, you have muscles in the front of your body and you have muscles in the back of your body. And when you're not in good postural alignment, you can become tight in some areas and overstretched in others. And what this can lead to is decreased range in motion, um, as well as pain. And then this can also, when you're not in good alignment, can make it harder for you to react properly when you start to lose your balance. Because sometimes, you know, people trip on objects, sometimes people slip on ice, but, you know, whatever the reason is for your fall, like the better, the more where you are of your body, the better off you're going to be. And the better your posture is, the more the muscles are going to react properly. Um, and then the other thing that is, you can work on is just breathing. I know people are like, oh, I breathe all the time. Like I do that. Um, but with good muscle health, I like to think about good oxygen perforation. So a lot of times I'll tell my patients to take a couple nice deep breaths every hour that you're awake during the day. And I don't want anybody hyperventilating. So like, don't go too wild with it. But just by taking a couple nice big breaths and kind of feeling that oxygen go into the lower sections of your lungs, like that helps to provide oxygen to your brain and to your muscles. And it also helps to kind of pull you 
like hopefully back up into better alignment. Um, so those are some of the things that people can do to help avoid falls. And breathing is also very good for relaxation. You can kind of take a minute when you're having some anxiety and, you know, breathing is just very important. And people don't think about how we just, it's something we take for granted. We just, it's like, oh, I breathe all the time. Mm -hmm. But in reality, like breathing is so important. And like you said, getting oxygen throughout your body and things like that. So yeah, absolutely. Um, what are some, um, some signs that someone may be increased risk for falls? So some signs that someone may be at an increased risk for a fall is if they've had a recent fall or if they're afraid of falling. Um, and those might sound like this, this downward spiral where you are, um, you know, maybe getting weaker, maybe becoming deconditioned. Um, and it's pretty easy and fast. Like deconditioning does not take long. So if you've had a recent hospitalization or you've been just kind of just not feeling great for a few days and laying around or sitting around more, like those can contribute to weakness. Mm -hmm. um, other things that can affect it are any medication changes, um, as well as if you've had any sort of visual changes, um, any inner ear changes, or if you have any decreased sensitive, um, sensation or sensitivity in your lower extremities or in your feet. A lot of chronic conditions can lead to diminished sensation um, in your lower extremities. And we get our balance feedback from, you know, from the ground through our body, you know, through our feet and our legs and our hips and things like that. But we also get our balance feedback from our eyes and our ears. And so this is why those preventive checks with your eyes and your ears and your just overall health are so important because they all are connected in the role of helping you to avoid falls and avoid, you know, the adverse effects that can come with that. So. Um, sorry, my cats just kind of like came at each other through the window and <laughs> startled me there for a second. Uh, what are some things that individuals can do at home to reduce the risk of falling? So one of the easiest things they can do at home is just kind of reduce any, reduce, remove clutter, um, remove throw rugs from the ground um, that aren't, you know, necessary. Wearing proper footwear is a good one, um, as well as if you have been told to or encouraged to use an assistive device to improve your safety, you know, maybe use it. And sometimes people just forget to take it with them. And that's also something that outpatient or, you know, that therapy can help with is kind of that remembering and, you know, task management. Um, so using your assistive device, um, as well as, you know, some people find that like if they have glasses, they get the little thing to keep them around their neck. So they're not always like wandering around trying to find them. Um, so those are things that you can do. Um, take your medications as directed um, with your doc, like by your doctor, you know, and on time because it's medications and and this is even over-the-counter medications can affect our balance, you know, so kind of keeping all that in mind. And then um, again, just talking to your doctor if you have any concerns about your balance, um, so. Great. Um, any other resources you have? Yes, um, so we will, so there's a sheet that I actually um, usually give to providers and go hand out when back in the day when we used to have like expos and I hope that we get back to again one day, but it's just kind of information about falls. So um, information about risk factors, information about what to do if you do fall um, and some of the, the ways that therapy can help um, and ideas of exercises and things like that. But by all means, like if you have questions, please let me know, like I, like myself and all the clinicians in the area and all of your healthcare providers, like we want you to live well and feel well. And, you know, like Benjamin Franklin said, you know, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Um, so by just kind of staying ahead of things, you know, we can really help you to, to live better. But if you have questions, like, please let me know. I, I can sit, like, I live in Carroll County. I grew up here. I live here. Like, I, like y'all are like my family. And so <laughs> If I can help with anything, like I want to, you know, so just let mm -hmm. me know, you know, ask questions or things like that. So. Awesome. Thank you. Um, if you have any questions on Facebook later, feel free to send them out to us. You can email them to us or message us. Um, but thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much, everybody.